for the fun of it, I'm going to start giving out some awards on MMA Twitter. So I have a Twitter account. It's at the underscore MMA underscore rundown. And follow a lot of the top guys in MMA, whether it's the fighters, the journalists, so be it. Uh, you get a lot of your usual tweets, whether it's kind of like your Jake Shields and um, Brandon Vera accounts where it's just uh, clickbait or um, click factory articles. Uh, you get your journalists where they're just giving you all the most up-to-date stories. Some of them like to make a lot of political commentaries, too. Uh, just a lot of the usual stuff. But every so often, you get some good tweets. So every week, I'm going to start having a little MMA Twitter award going on. There aren't like any set awards that there have to be every week. It's just going to be when I see some tweets that I find to be very interesting, then I'll kind of make up an award for them as I go, and we'll go from there. So the big theme of the first few this week is fake news. So just to give you an idea of where this whole fake news meme comes from, after the election in November when Donald Trump won, one of the main reasons that was brought up by the left as to why he won is because there were supposedly a lot of fake news sites where they were purposely making fake news, like saying, oh, George Sor Soros is paying billions of dollars to get fake protesters to be outraged at Trump or something to that effect. And they were kind of using that as a way where it's like, well, Fake news is why Trump won. We're going to start filtering out fake news. And it was becoming a real issue where it could be a freedom of speech thing. Um, and to counter that, what Donald Trump did, and I think it was actually pretty good on his part, is he started using the term fake news to just throw right back at other reporters that he didn't like. So he'd use it towards CNN, where if they were a little bit off on something or if they were kind of making an, edit an editorial message when it really should have just been reporting the facts, he'd use fake news against them. And right now, the term fake news is just something that's used back and forth almost like as a slander towards journalists as another way of saying you did a very shitty job of journalism what you've done is fake news so the first fake news award of the week will go to mma fighting and sure dog so during the um and this really goes to mma fighting not sure dog during the davi ramos and sergio Moraes fight sure dog and mma fighting were both live tweeting who they had thought won each round they were scoring it and then obviously when the fight ended they put up their score and MMA fighting had been picking Sergio Ramos during a couple of the rounds, which is, or Davi Ramos, not Sergio Ramos, Davi Ramos during a few of the rounds, which isn't necessarily bad. It was a close fight. I can understand why they had him. But then when the fight was over, they also said that Davi Ramos had defeated Sergio Moraes when Moraes had won. Chances are this is really just a typo, not really a big deal, but it was a fun little thing to see where in, your, in my feed I had them both side by side, so it was kind of funny to see that Sure Dog was on the Moraes side. Um, MMA fighting was on the Ramos side and once the fight was over they reported who they had thought won uh, next one is the best response to fake news award now the Onion obviously they're a satire it's not real news we, I'm not like oh well there goes the Onion making a lie or a fake story obviously the Onion they do what they do for satire it's funny they ran a story where it was talking about how a mother knew that her son was going to be an MMA fighter because he used to beat the shit out of everything in the house and the picture they used was that of Cody Garbrandt. So Cody Garbrandt got a hold of this and responded to it. And his response was just, this is all bullshit. And that's not even my mama laughing. And then he had like a middle finger emoji. So I thought that was pretty funny. Um, and then there's the fake news watchdog award, which goes to front row Brian, who absolutely loves to use the hashtag fake news. And I'm using hashtag fake news in the video as well, because I'm not hashtag fake news and actual fake news can be a little bit different. The hashtag is kind of like more of like the meme side of it. But um, Mark Raimondi had said that Mackenzie Dern missed weight, and Front Row Brian disagreed with that. He said, more fake news. The bout agreement she signed when she stepped on the scale said 120. She made 120. Didn't attempt to weigh in at 116. Uh, and this also kind of spurred a longer conversation. I'll just kind of read you through just in case you're listening. Um, Front Row Brian said, she didn't miss the contracted weight she signed before stepping on the scale. Mark Raimondi of MMA Fighting said... Where did I say she did? This is all in response to Ramondi's article on the topic. From O'Brien responded, You said unable to make contracted weight. The contracted weight when she stepped on the scale is 120. She made it. Mark Ramondi said, Unable to make contracted weight. So it was changed to catch weight. That's what happened. Stop trolling. And then after Farmer O'Brien responded to that, Jonathan Snowden stepped in and said, Hey, do you still work for Flow? No. That seems like a decent dig at him, but he does still work for Flow, so I'm not exactly sure what the point Snowden was trying to make is. But again, Jonathan Snowden is like the Skip Bayless of MMA, so if he says something that's factually untrue or doesn't make a whole lot of sense, that's really not a surprise. Um, next award is for bad trash talk. 
So during the MMA awards, Luke Rockhold had said that he is going to take a detour straight into Michael Bisping's ass. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess, I guess that's a, that's a term you can use. So Bisping's response was, I guess he's just sexually frustrated, take it elsewhere. And Luke Rockhold's response to that was, I only put the ass there to accentuate the bitch I put before it. You're pathetic. So I guess he was saying he's going to take a detour into his bitch ass. I, I, again, I don't know. That's, that's some pretty basic stuff that you'd almost feel like you'd be hearing in kindergarten. It's not good at all. On the positive side, this comes from boxing. It was tweeted out by Critic Bo, Victor Ortiz. Speaking to Brandon Rios, it said, can you even speak? Brandon Rios' response was, no, but I can fuck you up. It, it's funny. It, it's short. It's to the point, but it's pretty pretty funny. I like that. Uh, the Bad Synergy Award. This is for Joseph Benavidez, who... Now, again, MMA is a little different than most jobs, obviously. If you have a big issue with your boss in MMA or in a fight sport, that can actually sell really well. It can be a positive, whereas in a more corporate setting, it would be a negative. So there was a tweet from MMA and a rapper saying jo- at Jojitsu, which is Joseph Benavidez, cough. The only one who should be fighting for the belt, cough, officially has no one to fight in the top ten of the division, which is referencing Joseph Benavidez. They're saying that he was he's the most deserving of a title shot, and he doesn't even have a fight. And the other top guys are all booked up. And Joseph Benavidez's response was, "Shit is fucking ridiculous." And then tweeted at Mick Maynard. Mick Maynard, of course, is his boss and the matchmaker. So, again, not a great idea, not a great look to be ripping on your boss on Twitter in general, but to rip on your boss on Twitter and then tag your boss into the comment that you were ripping him on. Not a smart move. So, hopefully Benavides doesn't bite himself or shoot himself in the foot here too much, but that wasn't the smartest tweet on his part. Um, the Trigger and Tyrant Award. This one... It's it's not a big deal. It really shouldn't be a big deal. Hopefully it gets swept under the rug because it really should. Guillermo Cruz of MMA Fighting had tweeted out that Kelvin Gastelum says he's no, he knows how to beat the UFC champion. And instead of typing Tyron Woodley, he wrote Tyson Woodley. That's a difference of an R to an S, which aren't terribly far apart on the keyboard. They're both on the left side of the keyboard. Honest mistake, but knowing how Tyron Woodley likes to make everything about race, maybe he sees this and thinks, oh, would you think I was Tyson Woodley if I was white? So, again, I don't know. This, this shouldn't be a big deal, but anytime something kind of comes off weird with Tyron Woodley, you never know how he's going to take it. And the final award of the week is the Questionable Retweet Award. So Julie Kedzie has a habit of retweeting a lot of stuff. Most of it's uh, left-wing talking points. A lot of them don't involve a whole lot of logic. Your typical stuff like, hey, here's someone who was in the KKK who likes something that conservatives like. Therefore, if you like it too, you're a a KKK supporter, just that kind of stupid bullshit. But this time around, she retweeted an article asking whether you should spit or swallow or spray it in the air like a tiny whale. So mostly, most of the people I follow are MMA follows. So to have that pop up on my feed, thought it was worth mentioning in here.